Good morning, folks. We've got some extreme weather across the world, a very quiet sun, still waiting on the lithospheric action, and we learn a bit about habitable planets. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a good deal of calm as the sun turns. Looks like a big filament is growing just behind the eastern wall of the coronal hole, but no ejections and no flashes of solar flares as we continue to ride in flatline territory there. This is as the Earth-facing groups are entirely suppressed despite their size and proximity to one another. We're seeing three red negative cores to these umbra, and when it comes to magnetism and completing circuits, two negatives don't help you out. You can see the umbral fields come strong at the sunspot but fade quickly with altitude as they have to spread out a great deal to find positive connection points. Now. Compare that weak field action with what you see from exactly four years ago today. That active region made solar flares as the powerful magnetic fields connecting different sunspots snapped around and allowed the positive and negative interaction to play out. No such thing today. So we come to the solar wind where all remains calm, if not even calmer than before. KP solid and safe range, not taking solar storms or too many cosmic rays. If you want to learn more about this stuff, sunspots, magnetic fields on the sun, solar flares, solar wind, the effects on Earth, well, anyone watching these news shows should really take a few minutes and learn more at that link up at the top of spaceweathernews.com. Don't forget, another solar wind intensification is likely only about two days away from this coronal hole. The earthquake uptick is slow to come on from it, and frankly, we'll take all the shaking that doesn't happen that the Earth is willing to throw our way. Top story today is about where to look for life among the stars. Apparently Earth is actually very lucky, they say, to have the main things you'd want to see on a habitable planet, but there may be no need for luck elsewhere. Apparently, circumbinary systems provide a good deal of the processes and protections a burgeoning planet might want. Tides, magnetic fields, whether induced or intrinsic, tectonics, and seasons. These are the systems most set up for life according to the paper, and if you didn't know, the majority of stars are binary systems. Well, we're at weather, and while winter's ongoing, we got a taste of spring and summer in the southern central states with torrential downpours and even a tornado touchdown. See what I did there? No matter where you are in the states, tough to avoid some kind of inconvenience from these systems, and tonight, we're going to be watching the central Earth spot shift north and then northeast, taking the storms along its eastern convergence. As another system approaches the west, a warm band of air coming up the leading convergence edge has the potential to rapidly melt record snowfall that has come down in Oregon. That would cause major flood events. We're going to go down under next, where the Brisbane weather yesterday was no fun at all. Thunderstorms, major rainfall, flash flooding, and even a tornado was spotted. In one region, the rain proved too much for the dam, and it began to overflow, and flow, and flow. North of there, Japan, in the midst of a cold wave, bringing major snow and putting temperature records in jeopardy, as a powerful earth spot system yanks Arctic air right down the waterways towards Japan. Should continue at least the next 12 to 24 hours. There are a ton of resources we have for you guys. Please check them out and get as much as you can from them. We've got pressure and radar forecast here, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.